Hello everyone, this is Jason Gregerson. Welcome to the next video in your Calculus 2 video series. Today we're going to start section 11.10, working with Taylor and Maclaurin series. So specifically we're going to talk about how to drive the formula for a Taylor series. Then we'll try to apply the formula to find the Taylor series for specific functions. Then we'll talk about finding the Taylor series of new functions using the Taylor series we already know. And lastly, we'll talk about the geometric representation of the Taylor series. All right, in this specific video, we're just going to go through the derivation of the formula. Let's get started. All right, so given a function f of x, the goal is to find a power series representation for the function. So in general, if we are using a series centered at a, we would have this representation for a general power series centered at a. And if we use a power series centered at 0, we could represent that power series generally like this. And so really the big question is, can we find the right set of constants so that this series actually converges to the function? Okay, so how do we find these right constants? Okay, so we'll start off by looking at the formula for the Taylor series centered at zero. The derivation for the other one is basically the same, same process, and so we'll work with this slightly easier case. The idea is that if this series converges to the function, then if we pick some point like at x equals zero, then the function value should be pretty much the same. In other words, f of zero should be the same thing as the power series evaluated at zero. So let's, let's try that. If I plug in x equals zero, on the left hand side, I get, well, whatever the function is evaluated at zero, f of zero. If I plug in x equals zero on the right hand side, all of my terms except for the very first one actually disappear. c1 times 0 is 0, c2 times 0 squared is 0, so on and so forth, so I just get this. And so in this way I've actually found my first constant. c0 is the function evaluated at 0. Okay, we have that one. Now the next thing I might say is, well, at that point x equals 0, not only should they be at the same height value, the same function value, but they should also have the same slope at that point if this series really does represent this function. Well, that means their derivative should be the same at x equals 0. So if I calculate the derivative of the series, I have f prime of x, well, the derivative of a constant is 0, and the derivative of a constant times x should be just the constant. Then I'd have 2c2x, 3c3x squared, so on and so forth. And the idea was these values should be the same at x equals 0. So when I plug in x equals 0 to the left and the right, I'll get f prime of 0 on the left. I'll get just c1 on the right. Wonderful. And now I know the value of c1. But not only should the position and the slope be the same at x equals 0, if the series is a good representation of our function, but also the concavity should match. In other words, the second derivative should also be the same. So let's just keep repeating this process the second derivative of x should look like 2c2 plus 3 times 2, c3 times x, 4 times 3, c4 times x squared, and then we can just continue going here. And once again, these values should match at x equals 0. So then on the left, I get the second derivative evaluated at 0. On the right, I'd get 2 times c2. And so I almost have that value for that constant. All I have to do is divide both sides by 2. So now I know that c2 is equal to f double prime evaluated at 0 divided by 2. Let's keep going. Third derivative. So here's what I have for the third derivative. Once again, if I evaluate this at 0, I'll get 3 times 2 times c3, and then all the rest of the terms go away. And so now it looks like I have c3 is equal to the third derivative evaluated at 0 divided by 3 times 2. But now I see sort of a pattern developing. So I want to put some specific values into this pattern. So that does say 3 times 2, but I could also multiply it by 1, and that wouldn't actually change the value. So I can think of that as 3 times 2 times 1, which is the definition of 3 factorial. And if I'm thinking about these factorials, well, 
2 times 1 is 2 factorial, so I can really think of this as 2 times factorial. I can actually go back and do the same thing for my C1 value as well. And what I can see is if I keep repeating this process, that next value, that C4 value, well, it will just be the fourth derivative evaluated as 0 divided by, will divide it by the coefficient of the C4 term here, which I can see is 4 times 3 times 2, maybe times 1, that would give me 4 factorial. And I can see those other factorials starting to show up as the coefficients of these other pieces. As I take more derivatives, I'll get the extra factors I need to convert those into factorials. And so I can see now a pattern in these coefficients to the proper power series. So in general, I'm just going to use these constants as the constants of my power series. And I'll be able to write out the formula for the Taylor series of this function f of x. It's going to be f of 0 plus my value for c1, which was the derivative evaluated at 0 times x, plus, well, my expression for c2. That was the second derivative evaluated at 0 divided by 2 factorial. Remember, that's the coefficient. That's the c2. I still need to take that piece and multiply it by x squared as part of my power series. And then I can just keep on going plugging in those other constants. So this is the process of finding the derivation for that Taylor series. So if we take all this information and summarize it into our two big formulas, we'll see the following. Taylor series for a function centered at 0, which we actually have another name for. We actually call the Maclaurin series when it's specifically centered at 0, has the following equation. The Taylor series for the function centered at A has the following formula. And so once again, the points to highlight are that Maclaurin series might sound like a special thing, but it's really just another name for a Taylor series that's specifically centered at 0 whereas we could center a general power series anywhere. Also, we look at the summation notation of our formulas here. You might be a little bit nervous that what happens at i equals, what happens at n equals 0, and this should be an n right here, and an n from equals 0 up to infinity. But what happens at n equals 0, where we have 0 factorial in the denominator? That might seem like a problem, but it's actually not, because 0 factorial is actually defined to be 1. So that works with our formula just fine. All right, so in the next video, we're going to look at how we actually take these formula for a specific function and calculate their Taylor series. That concludes this video.